David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. Now, I know a lot of you don't immediately think of me as the prop guy, and I'm not the prop guy. I am a prop guy, meaning I like to collect props. I mean, take a look over my shoulder, take a look around me. My collection is filled with props that I've collected for years. And here's a little secret. Don't tell anybody. I collected props well before I got into the James Bond lifestyle, clothing, accessories, grooming. Oh yeah, I collected props and fast. My first, um, my first screen use piece was the Ericsson phone from Tomorrow Never Dies. You know, the one that he dials his BMW up on. I had that screen use version. Ugh, boy, do I miss it. Anyway, I wanted to quickly do a, a review, a discussion of some of the new props that I've received just in the last few weeks. It's really cool. Um, some of them are official. Some of them are made by incredible prop artists, but I wanted to show them to you. Let's start with a simple one. First of all, you probably recognize this. Looks like Q's computer from Spectre, doesn't it? It's not. It's just a silver old computer that I had. It's not even the right computer. But if you take a look, these stickers look amazing. They're even somewhat dimensional. And by the way, they even continue on the inside. They absolutely look the part. And why? Because 007 store has come up with this. This is, um, as you can see affectionately, Q's laptop stickers as seen in Spectre. It's great. It's a little tiny package. Um, if you're short on room, it's not a big deal to get these because look, that's it. That's your prop. I mean, even if you just put the stickers out, even if you don't put them on your computer, but there's some great pictures online that you can see from some auctions that actually show you where to put the stickers. And what's nice is these stickers aren't just little behoogy little stickers. And these are the ones I've already peeled off. But if you take a look at, for example, this dinosaur one right here, uh, it's got a little dimension to it. It's got a little bit of heft. You can see kind of the, the thickness of it. It's not your typical little child sticker that they get when they walk into a Chuck E. Cheese if that ever happens. They're actually pretty cool and interdimensional. They're basically also the right size, which is kind of neat. You know, when you see Q doing his thing on his laptop. And so if you want to set up your laptop or if you just want to make a very inexpensive prop, it's a really good way to do it. And they've just done an amazing job. Now there's another piece that 007 store came out with that I kind of had to get. And it actually factors into where my fingers are pointing right now for your eyes only is definitely something I really like. They have actually created the stick pin. And what, what do I mean by the stick pin? Well, you know that there is the dove uh, in for your eyes only. You can see it comes in a really nice case. It'll look good with your uh, cufflinks and things like that. Here is the back right now. And again, the detail is great. But then when you open it up, oh, 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 da, da, da. How cool is that? I mean, it's a prop. It is not only a prop, it's seen in a great Roger Moore movie. A lot of people respect this movie because it's not a huge movie. It doesn't have big explosions and things like that. It's not in outer space, but it's got a great spy genre story. And this piece right here, the Dove stick pin, is something that factors in very heavily. So for not a lot of money, you've got an incredible displayable prop, plus you could wear it. I mean, many people out there in the world aren't going to know that this is a James Bond prop, so you could invisible hobby it if you like. Now, I want to show you some really cool things because that's because the stuff that came from the 007 store. I do have a little complaint. Right. This has got to be kind of an even handed uh, review. So I have to show you this. This is I want to show you how um, this unfortunately came. I mean, take a look. This is pretty bad. Um, this is. Again, just really, really bad packaging. It was all bubbled up to the point where um, some of these things, if you do collect these, were a little bent and misshapen. It doesn't bother me. I'm not that type of a collector, but uh, some of you might be bothered. I wasn't too happy. Maybe this is because they're now shipping uh, from the United States for the United States, but whoever they're using, uh, really not great packaging. And if we've ordered a prop and we want something to come in, we want it to come in to good shape. Okay, let's 
move on because that is some of the official stuff that you can order and they're fun. It's not going to break the bank or anything like that. But I wanted to show you what an artist put together. His name is Heinrich and a good friend of mine. I've known him for many years. He's always made some incredible pieces and for his own pleasure, he's made a couple pieces and he was able to share a few with me as his friend. Um, no big deal, but I wanted to show you these pieces because they're pretty cool. So if we're sticking with the whole idea, since we showed the stick pin of Roger Moore, check this out. Genus Apalaclina produces a venom that's invariably fatal in seconds. He knew something was missing in my octopusy a little display here. So he made the notebook. Look at this. This is the coolest thing. It's got the little thing that goes around it, the, the elastic, but that is just perfect. And then you open it up and it's got the drawing sign of an old secret order of female bandits and smugglers, blue ringed octopus. Look at the detail and the artwork here. And by the way, it matches these tattoos that he supplied me really well. I mean, let's face it, a lot of this octopusy display is from his hands. But he also moved into Pierce Brosnan. It's so funny too, because the world is not enough. He admitted it's not his favorite movie, but some of these things that he made are just unbelievable. Look at these IDs. I mean, back, front, look at this. This is unbelievable, the detail. And I don't know if you can see it, but look at the lenticular lens that he used for this. I mean, he really didn't hold back on any detail. And even the picture underneath has dimension. Look at this Denise Richard one. I mean, that picture is just bang on to the one you see in the film. And again, details on the back just to kind of send it home. And then look at this archive. I mean, just fantastic. But probably one of my favorites is this, you know, when, when Brosnan sneaks in, uh, he's got a separate little picture to show how it falls underneath, but you can't tell from this, but you can feel the picture underneath this, the lamination that he, you know, did it on the fly. He did it very quickly. I mean, look at that. That is just so cool how he did that. I'm really impressed how he put all those parts and pieces together. Of course, he had to move into Skyfall, of course. And again, he did not hold back on any of these details. Look at Q's badge. I mean, it's got everything. It's got the numbers. Uh, the backing on it is all correct and bang on. Uh, even down to the, you know, please return to SIS at 85 Albert Embankment. I mean, I love these. You know, when I got these in, I just, it's the details. That's what I love about these types of props. It's the details that artists like Heinrich really just absorb themselves into. They get, um, I mean, quite frankly, they get absolutely, look at the 007 in the corner. They get obsessed about it. And that obsession uh, happily, happily serves us all incredibly well. I mean, look at this, zero, zero, 001. All right. I mean, who would even look to that type of a detail and the signatures and everything? I mean, just what an amazing, amazing addition to the collection. Well, there you have it. Just a quick, short conversation about some of these props that I've received lately. We're going to talk about these more. I mean, consider this uh, talking props part one. There's going to be part two and part 86. And that's because some things are really brewing. I mean, we've got official props and we've got licensed props coming out. We've got uh, prop artists that do short runs for friends that wind up in collections like this, which we really appreciate as the archive grows. And what a lead up, what an amazing lead up we're going to have to no time to die because we know there's going to be props and things to to get and have and own and love and appreciate in that movie. I mean, it just is really across the board and we're going to share them with you. So welcome to that. And this is the first among many. And this has been David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience Talking Props. Can you believe it? And we'll see you real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.